Hi, this is Joel Persinger. I'm the Gun Guy. Thank you very much for watching my videos. I really do deeply appreciate it. I wanted to talk with you in this video about why I think you should be carrying a handheld light if you're ever carrying a gun. Frankly, I think you should be carrying a handheld light all the time, whether you have a gun or not. Now, this is a light that I'm going to tell you why I like it. I got it from Optics Planet here in a few minutes. It's very, very inexpensive and very terrific light. And I've been carrying it for about three months. And this is the light that I've been carrying for years, which is expensive. This one is inexpensive. <laughs> it's like under 15 bucks. This one's closer to 100. And sometimes you can get them, you know, they're $200 or $80 or $90 or whatever. And you can see I've worn this one out uh, because I've just worn the little rubber thing off the end. I've carried it for so many years. Now, I like the light a lot, but it's nice to have an inexpensive option that will still get the job done. So we'll talk about this one in a minute. But before I do, let me discuss why I think you should always have a handheld light. And this is what I tell my students all the time. You may have a weapons mounted light. You may carry a firearm with the light on the, on the actual gun, which is great. Those are great too. And I'm not dispelling them in any way, but you can't use those in some instances when you can use this. For example, you have your weapons mounted light. You're walking out of the mall to go out into the parking lot. And you drop your keys. You can't draw your weapon to go searching around for your keys, but you can pull out a handheld light to do that. Or in any other situation where you wouldn't want the weapon, but you would want the light, you cannot draw the weapon to look for things. You can draw the weapon to use the weapon, but not to just use the light. So that leaves you without a light unless you have a handheld light with you. Now, I carry a handheld light most of the time, and as I said, I generally carry this one. The last couple months, I've been carrying this one just to try it out, and I carry it because most of the time, I carry a little snubby revolver, and there's no place to attach a light. So this is my weapons light as well as my handheld light. Now, if you're, if you're in that situation, there are many ways to use a handheld light in the dark, and sometimes it can be very, very dark. In another video, I'll talk about a blinding drill and you'll learn very quickly why you should always have a light when you're shooting. But there's not time in this video, so I'll cover that one in a, in a video sometime in the future. There's a whole bunch of different methods to use these. Uh, you've probably seen a lot of them. One is called the Harry's. That's where you have the light in one hand and your firearm in the other. And you just marry the backs of both hands together like that. And so here's your gun, and here's your light, and you line it up, and that's how you would shoot is just like that. I mean, you've seen that on television probably a million times. That's called the Harry's. You can call it whatever you want, but that's basically what that's called. Now, there's other ways to do it. There's uh, the sword grip. That's where you would grip the, the light like you would hold a sword. And I'll, I'll do it reverse hands here so that you can see what I'm talking about. Then you've got the light held this way. The light is on, and you would have your gun and your light, and you would just marry your thumbs together next to each other and give your, your shooting hand a little bit of support by pressing up against it. But essentially, you're trying to line the light up against a gun. And that's another way to use a handheld light while shooting. And I think Masad Ayub has his own little version of that, uh, which frankly I don't remember. But he's a pretty sharp guy, so you might want to look into that as well. Now there's also various different versions of the syringe method. That's, uh, I think a guy named Bill Roberts, if I remember correctly, came up with this. And that's where you're holding the flashlight kind of like a syringe in between your index finger and your middle finger. And when you press this way, it turns the light on. Now that doesn't work that well with this one. And you'd want to have a light that worked really well for that. There are some that work brilliantly for that. This one doesn't work that well that way. You would essentially then have your gun hand and your shooting, your shooting hand and your support hand with the light, and you'd stick them together again like that. Give yourself a little support, and that lines the flashlight up with your gun. Now, that's the syringe method is what I've heard it called many times. I've seen different instructors do it differently. Most of them I've seen do it this way. Some of them I've seen teach it between your middle finger and your ring finger, which always struck me as being kind of odd, but I've seen it. And I've also seen a couple of instructors teach it between your ring finger and your pinky, and I ask why, and the argument was that that way you could use your top two or three fingers to get a decent grip on your firearm and shoot this way. I actually went out to the range and tried that. And once you get it in position, it works pretty well, but it's kind of awkward getting there. But that's a different version of the syringe method. Now there's also the neck index. That's where you hold the light up here and you stick the gun out in front of you and you shoot. Anywhere you look is where the flashlight is going to shine. So that's indexed up against your neck. And I think I probably would, uh, would be terribly remiss, I'm trying to think of any more, if I didn't mention the FBI method. And that's where the flashlight is out to the side of you and the gun is out in front. 
Now the theory there is that since the flashlight is over here, that uh, if the bad guy can't see you but they can see the shining light, they're going to shoot at the light and it potentially will miss you because the light is over there. The worst that can happen is you're going to get hit in the hand or the arm or something, but it's not going to hit you. Now when you think about it, all those other ways of holding a light, the neck index, the Harry's, the uh, sword grip, the syringe, they all put the light right in front of you. And so if somebody's going to shoot at the light, you happen to be standing right behind it. That's probably no bueno. Now, my dad, who was a deputy sheriff for many years, used to teach me to start out if I was searching for somebody with the FBI method, because that way the light was away from me in case I took a round or two. And then once I had identified my target to transition to the neck index or transition to the Harry's so that I could give my hand a little support or more easily get my light on target and see my sights. This does give me the advantage of it lighting up my gun as well as the, the suspect or the bad guy. I transitioned to that once I identified that person, but I would search with the light out here, which gave me that extra chance of being missed if somebody wanted to shoot at me. So there's different ways that you can use a handheld light. I don't personally think one is better than the other. I think it's just a matter of personal preference. I happen to prefer the Harry's and the FBI and sometimes the neck index. I don't, the syringe doesn't work that well for me and the, uh, the sword grip doesn't work that well for me, but I've met other people that love those and don't like the ones I like. As I said, it's not a good or bad, it's a what works best for you, but now you know what they are. Now, as far as this little light is concerned, I really like this little light for a few reasons. One, as I said, it's very inexpensive, but it's also very strong. I can drop it here, drop it on the concrete floor and uh, pick it up and bring it back. And it doesn't suffer any damage. I like that. It's very, very strong. It's an aluminum uh, body. It's tight as tight can be. And, uh, and it's every bit as strong as my expensive light, as far as I can tell. And I've dropped it a number of times. And as you can see, it always comes back up working. Now, you can adjust the intensity of the beam as well. As you can see, you can make it smaller or bigger. That's fairly common with these little lights. And you just slide the bezel forward and back. It has a serrated bezel on it. That's a great self-defense tool. So if you've got the light on somebody and they get a little too close and you need to clear their hand out of the way and bop them in the face with it, you can do that all day with something like this. And if you get hit in the face with this, bad guy gets hit in the face with this a couple times, they're going to leave you alone because it's going to hurt. Or at least you'd hope they would anyway. The other thing I like about it is it's small, it's relatively light, it works very well, and the button is very positive. It does have some different modes, so I see yeah, there's the not so bright mode, there's the flashing mode, there's the really bright mode. And it depends on how many times you push the button. But my favorite thing about it, oh, and I, it also has a really strong clip. My favorite thing about it other than the price is this. It's the fact that it takes a regular AA battery as opposed to the more pricey and more difficult to obtain Surefire type batteries that, uh, that this flashlight takes. So in, in a pinch, I know I can grab a double A at the local convenience store. I don't know that I can get a battery for this one at the local convenience store, so it's always nice to be able to get uh, backup batteries rather simply. Now there's one more reason why you should have a handheld light that I didn't mention before, and I, I should have, and that is that sometimes this little tool can keep you from having to draw your firearm at all. I've actually had instances where I've been walking from the dark parking lot of the mall uh, with my wife to go to the movies, this happened one day, and a gentleman approached us. I'm not so sure he was a gentleman, by the way, I'm being kind. He started to approach us, and he approached us in a way that seemed to me to be uh, a little concerning. I told him to stay back. I asked him to stay back a little bit, and he wouldn't do it, and he wouldn't do it. And I drew that light, not this one, but this one, but the result would be the same. I drew my light, and I hit him right in the face with a 200 lumen light. Now, this one's 300 lumens, so it's even brighter. And of course, his reaction was, hey, you know, get that out of my face. I said, no, I'm actually happy with it being right where it is. I'd ask you to stay back and you wouldn't do it. Now, of course, while I've got this in his face, my wife and I are moving away in a different direction. And when I got far enough from him that I felt comfortable, I turned the light off and I kept going. He was calling me all kinds of things, uh, which I cannot repeat on this show. So I'm not going to even bother. But you can imagine the expletives that were coming out of his mouth. But what you learn if you ever do a blinding drill is that when you're hit with a bright light like that, it overwhelms your night vision. And so for a 
short period of time, 10, 12 seconds, you just can't see a thing. I mean, you're blind as a bat. And that was the case with him. He was blind as a bat. I don't know for how long, but I know within about seven or eight seconds, we were gone. By the time he could see again, we were nowhere to be found and had already stood in line and gotten our tickets probably and gone in the movie before he realized where we were. In fact, I would say he probably never realized where we were. In that instance, had he wanted to harm my wife or me, it would never have come to that. I didn't have to draw a weapon. I didn't have to do anything threatening. I just shined a light in his face. Now, if the cops come because he complains and says, that guy shined a bright light in my face. What? What, what's going to come of that? Did I hit him? Did I strike him? Did I yell at him? Did I swear at him? Did I threaten him in any way? No. I shined a bright flashlight in his face to get him to back up. A flashlight can be one of the best defensive tools you will ever have, and oftentimes it will keep you from ever having to do anything violent. Now, in the case of expensive tactical lights, I strongly advise them. I like them a lot. They're awesome. I will never tell you don't get one of these. But I also realize that people have budgets and that sometimes buying an expensive light is outside of the reality of that budget. And if that's the case, I wanted to just suggest to you that you take a hard look at this little J5 tactical light from Optics Planet. It's very inexpensive. Now, I've carried it for about two or three months, and I like it a lot. Has it completely replaced my expensive light? No, um, because I'm used to that and I kind of like it. But do I carry this one quite frequently? Yes, I do. And I would not feel, and I have not felt, uh, underprepared with it. I felt very prepared with it. It's a solid little light. You can find those uh, at a link that I've got in the description where you can buy the little J5 Tactical at Optics Planet. And don't forget to use my code GUNGUY5 when you purchase anything at Optics Planet. It will save you 5% on all of your purchases there. Not just purchases of this little flashlight, but anything you want to buy at Optics Planet. Use the code GUNGUY5. Now, if you're not a member of the National Rifle Association and you like watching gun videos, I want to urge you to join. So please join the NRA today. Yes, the NRA has been fighting like crazy and we've won some battles nationally. Unfortunately, not in my state, but that's coming, I hope. But the NRA still needs your help. There's a lot of battles to fight and uh, we need to win them and we need your help to do that. So please join. I've got a link for you in the description where you can save a little money and you can join the NRA for less than the cost of one box of ammunition for a year's membership. So please use that link and join NRA today. Also, if you haven't checked out Second Call Defense, I want to urge you to do that. They've become kind of a sponsor of our, uh, of our show and the channel here, and I'm really grateful for them. Uh, they're awesome. I've used their service for a long time, and uh, I highly recommend it. If you ever have to defend yourself with a gun, they'll step up and help you a lot and provide you with legal services you won't get anywhere else. Second Call Defense. You can check them out. There's a description, uh, or a link, rather, in the description. Thank you again for watching. Have a wonderful week, and please be safe.